Hey guys, it's Chris from Versus 3D. I am back. Welcome back to my channel. I feel like I've been letting you guys down a lot lately if you actually had any expectations to begin with, but that's beside the point. Anyway, I have a really great printer I want to talk to you guys about today. This is the FlashForge Adventure 3 Pro. All right, so let's talk about this little guy. Look at me, I'm sitting down and I have a really small table in front of me because this printer's so little. Um, I, I, I gotta say, I, I had my doubts. I really did, honestly, I had my doubts. I am sold on this little guy. If they made the exact same printer, like five times the size, I'd probably have three of them. Um, they're really, I, I was impressed. So first let's talk about the printer, what comes with it, and then we will get into the abundance of prints that I have to show you guys, okay? So but what comes in the bag? Not a lot, because you don't need it, okay? So what we have here, they give you just a little bit of extra white grease, or if you hold it the correct way, you'll see it like that. Comes with this handy dandy little screwdriver, which I didn't need for anything and so far. I don't. Uh, comes with one Allen key, which uh, again, I, I didn't need for anything so far. It comes with what I consider the uh, holy grail of uh, clog removal tools. I have one of these that came with my original Flash Forge, and it's one of those things I keep it. Hit, not hidden, but I keep it in a its designated place in my print shop. It is the only thing I put away every single time I use it because if I need it, it needs to be where it's supposed to be. So this thing is fantastic. So I'm very excited to have a second one. Um, I looked at their website, you can order them. So I think I might order like 10 of them just to have them. Um, and then what makes one of the things that makes the Adventurer 3 Pro different than the regular Adventurer 3 is it does come with a second hot end. So the second hot end, um, so the, the, the initial hot end, the one that comes with the regular machine, uh, the non-pro version is a uh, 0.4 millimeter and it goes up to 240C and that's the max. So yeah, you can still print ABS, you can more than likely print some PETG depending. Um, but you can't do anything like polycarbonate or anything up in, you know, the hotter temperature range. Um, this one is actually, this one goes to 265 and is a 0.4. Okay. And I'll show you how to swap them out. It takes four seconds to do. Um, so the entire thing is here. The heat block, the nozzle, the heater, the thermistor, the heat break, it's all built into this little plastic piece and it just connects with one fitting, it snaps right into place. So um, what they do have on the website, I double checked before I started making this video, they have, um, it, it, you'd think they'd be more expensive, they're actually really not, I find them very reasonably priced. So the 0.4 regular up to 240 is 27 bucks US. They also have a 0.3 version for 27 bucks US. This one is a little more expensive, it's 45 and it only comes in the 0.4. And I did use both quite a bit and uh, I'll show you the results. So let me put all these away and we'll talk about the printer. All right, so the printer is on, it's running. If you hear any of that noise, that, that is all you're gonna hear. This guy is quiet. I will say that it is so quiet. I'm not kidding when I say I was working at my desk and I had this sitting on the box that it came in running prints and I was in Zoom meetings, I was doing all kinds of stuff. No one heard a thing, I didn't even hear a thing. The only thing I had really ever heard was I could hear the retractions once in a while, but that was it. This thing is dead quiet. I didn't do any digging, so I'm not sure, but I'm assuming it's got something like a 2208, you know, for the drivers, or something equivalent, because it's really quiet. Um, you can probably hear the fan right now. It does have actually an exhaust fan, which is nice too. Um, so let's talk about the printer itself. So let me move some stuff over. So what does it have? The build volume on this guy is 150 by 150 by 150. So it's not really big, but you can utilize that space pretty well as I will show you. All right. So 
We talked about the nozzles already. So the bed, another part of the upgrade to make this the pro version, it does actually have a glass bed and not that like build tacky type of surface. Um, I'm not a fan of that, I'm not gonna lie. I love glass, I love mirror. So when I found out this had a glass bed, I was all like, yep, I'll try it. So, and the bed does go to 100C. It does take a little bit longer to go from like 90 to 100, but it doesn't take that long and it take it goes to 60 really fast uh, as the nozzles do. The nozzles heat up really fast as well. So, I mean, the nozzle's fully heated in like 30, 45 seconds, it's great. Um, so there's that. Maximum layer resolution is one, uh, 0 0.1 millimeters to 0 0.4 millimeters and uh, it prints at uh, the max speed is 100. I don't think I pushed it past 60. Um, it was great. Uh, when I asked them, they weren't, I don't think they had the exact pricing, but this is gonna be somewhere around 599 US, give or take, don't quote me on that, but that's what I got. Um, it does have um, somewhat automatic bed leveling uh, or somewhat manual bed leveling, but there's no screws, there's no anything. Um, it's, a, it's a process that you go through. It does also have, um, on the front, it has a USB port right around here, yep, right there, um, and the little touch screen, and uh, plugs on the side. It does have an ethernet port in the back, and it does also have Wi-Fi built in. So you can print directly from flash print, directly to the printer you don't need to plug anything in it found my wi-fi network it's super super easy to set up and you just punch in the ip address and go and then you can remember the printer it's pretty cool um i didn't use flash print in quite a while so it was nice to see a lot of the upgrades that they made um, this also has a little webcam and i'll see if i can show you guys on this camera over here it is this little dot. That's the webcam. So the, the downsides to the webcam is it really only works if you're using 3D Cloud. Um, I mean, it's a 2K webcam and it has kind of like a fisheye lens so you can see the entire build volume. Um, so it's pretty cool and it works well. But for me, it's, you know, one of the cons of this machine is it doesn't have... Uh, the ability to connect to Octoprint. But the Wi-Fi printing over flash print makes up for that, you know? So I'll take it, it works. Um, you know, I just, I use Octoprint for everything. This doesn't work with Octoprint. E even um, the Creator Pro works with Octoprint um, with some plugins. This doesn't, again, for most people, that doesn't matter. For me, uh, it's a slight inconvenience, but like I said, again, you can print Wi-Fi right out of flash print, makes up for it, so it's easy. Um, so that's cool. So did I talk about the glass bed? I sure did. Okay, cool, I got that. Um, it also does, so when you use a USB flash drive, it does actually take that file and transfer it to the internal memory. And I believe it's got 16 gigs of internal memory. And you, it's very easy to go through and delete the files. Even when you send the file over uh, Wi-Fi, it saves the file in internal memory, so you could always just reprint it again from the machine, so it's pretty cool. So it's not like you don't have your slice saved. So there's that, all right? So now, let's see what we got going on here. I'm gonna crouch down a little bit because I don't feel like moving my camera. So the bed is pretty nice, even though it's only mounted on one side like the other one. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but again, I, I didn't have a problem with it, so it was totally okay. Um, so let me see what else we have. Let's talk about the spool holder. So this was another thing um, that I, I, I didn't love this, but again, it's not the end of the world. It's not a make or break. Um, let me see if I can do this over here. So we take the door off. And the spool fits right in here, which is fantastic, except it doesn't, it, it didn't fit any spools that I had because it's really designed for 750 gram or smaller or half kilo spools because it's a small printer. So it didn't actually fit any spools that I had. So 
I needed a handy dandy spool holder. I found one on Thingiverse and I printed it and it just slides in there perfectly. No harm, no foul, it works great, okay? So there's that and it fits really snug in there, which is good. So let me show you this just in case because I don't remember who designed it or where, what thingy file it was, so. This is the one I printed, it works great. Um, other than that, so we are, so the, um, the extruders right here, it is super fast, like I said, to heat up. It has automatic loading, unloading, filament changing, everything's done off the touch screen, and it works great. Um, when you tell it to heat up to change the filament, I think it probably takes literally 30 seconds. It just heats up, and then tells you to insert the filament. If you want to swap it, it pull it unfeeds it all the way out again. All you do is, and it doesn't flip it out, which is nice. It actually stops. So you can just take it out, wrap it up, do your little tie thing like I do, and you're good to go. Um, the only downfall about using that external is you can't put the door back on. I thought I was going to be worried about that um, because there is a little bit of opening up the top. So I thought I'd be a little bit worried about draft, but not even at all. And the one cool thing too that I did check and I noticed was the door, even though it doesn't have a gasket, the door actually has this lip that goes right here. So when you do close it, it closes and there's no draft. So I didn't have any problems with prints sticking. Um, let me actually do a little adjusting here for a second so I can show you the nozzle. Okay, so like I said, changing the nozzle is really, really easy. So let me just make sure it's not hot before I'm stupid and touch it. It is not hot. Okay, so there's two little clips right here. These two little, little black things. You push these in. You need two hands to do this. You push these guys in. And just pull the nozzle out. And you can see the difference. So this one has a white connector. So this one is the 240 and it's not marked. So this one is the up to 240.4 millimeter. The other one has a red and that's the hotter one. And then to put it in, same thing. You just find where the hole is there and it snaps right into place and you're done. So the way the bed leveling works, I probably should have a piece of paper. Let me get a piece of paper. This is the actual piece of paper that I have been using. So the way that bed level then works is you just go to the tools and you go to settings. And now I've already done a full calibration on this. So I'm going to tell it to calibrate. And now it's getting ready to go. And you can hear how quiet it is when it's moving. I'm literally standing right on top of it. PLA in there. And I'm just going to take this piece of paper and stick it right there. So it has nine point manual leveling. And because I've already done a full calibration, it's just going to ask me to calibrate the, uh, the center point just to make sure the nozzle offset is okay. And then it will adjust the rest. But um, the one thing that I did notice is it only moves in 0.1 millimeter increments. So I did uh, speak to Flash Forge and I suggested that maybe they make it 0.5 millimeter increments. So it's slightly easier to get leveled better. So right now I don't have enough tension there. So I'm just going to move it down and now it's perfect. So now when I hit next, it's going to ask me if I want to do the complete calibration or no. I'm going to say no because it's just gonna be very boring to watch me go and do the other eight points.
but it's just that easy. Okay, you want to talk about some prints? Hang on, let me fix this guy. Here we go. All right, let's talk about some prints, okay? I did a lot of prints. A lot of prints. In fact, this video should have probably been done like a week ago. I couldn't stop printing. So anyway, let's talk about prints. So as we all know, if anybody has seen any of my other videos, I always, always use uh, David's uh, Captain America model as my first print just to see how the printer prints straight out of the box. So this is Eastman 3D's Captain America, scaled down really, really small to fit on this printer. And as you can see, just out of the box, it looks really good, right? So I'm gonna say the only thing that I find in pretty much all of these prints that I, I could have worked on more and I didn't, was the stringing. So they're a little stringy, but playing with the settings, you know, and just adjusting your retractions and your speed will obviously make a difference. I didn't. So some of these prints are a little stringy, but I was really, I'm not gonna lie, blown away at the quality of some of these prints. So here's Captain America, okay? So there's Cap right there. So I figured I might as well print Wonder Woman so here's Eastman 3D's Wonder Woman. And you can see how smooth that print is. Like the quality is really, really good. You know, nice job all the way through. This had no supports at all. You can see that overhang on the chin. Oh, actually, wait, is this the one with support? No, nope, sorry, I lied. This one did have a little support under the chin. So there's that. And I, was, I watched a couple of other videos just because I wanted to see, um, you know, what the situation looked like with the printer because I hadn't used this one before. Um, so I, I think I was watching Joel's video and he was talking about the par cooler and it only comes in from one side and he thought it may, have, may or may not have been sufficient. So I printed this par cooler you know, that I found on Thingiverse. Um, and notice it's not installed. It's still right here. I never installed it. And I will show you why. So then I printed a test. I just found this model on Thingiverse. I've used it before. It's just an angle test. You know, it does bridging, it does sizing, it does everything. I want you to look at this and really look at this. Now I'm gonna show you the side. This is an 80 degree angle. And look at that. That blew me away. Everything else sizes fantastic. You can see there's some stringing between the little tests here. So yes, I absolutely could have worked on that more, but that was me, that's not the printer. And then even here, there's still some stringing in these holes, but look at the bridging. That's perfect. So I felt absolutely no need to put a different cooling fan on there. None. Okay, this one does cool from both sides. And although it, it may be better, I didn't need it. I may put it on there just as a comparison at some point, just to see, but I, I didn't need it. So then, um, I have a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Anyway, um, first thing I'm gonna do is, so with all the stuff that I printed, and I'm not gonna show you everything in order because I don't remember the order because there's too many to remember. But um, I did notice different qualities of PLA obviously made a difference. So, you know, these guys uh, are both NatureWorks 4032D. These are from Digit Makers um, in Canada. And, uh, so I, I tried some different stuff. So 
Another good quality PLA. A little Wexter action going on with Captain Marvel Mini. And this is Isan PLA Plus. And I, I never have a problem with this. I always get beautiful prints from it on any printer. So uh, no exception, gorgeous. Um, but then I realized I had something in my vault of PLA and I was gonna use it. So when I bought my original Flash Forge Creator Pro 150 years ago, I still have the PLA from it. It's not in a box, it's not in a tub, it's not even in a bag, it's just sitting on a rack. So I busted it out and I kept it because I loved the color. And it's something I use for kind of like rare occasions and it always prints. So I dug around and I don't remember if I found this on cults or whatever, but this is Grandizer or Golderac, depending where you grew up in the original Flash Forge PLA. And you can see, I mean, it's a little stringy. It's a little sketchy in some spots, especially around the hands where there was massive supports. Cause I didn't, honestly, I didn't really tune the supports either. Um, and in fact, I realized just now that I left some on the back under his helmet. Um, but in general, it is really smooth and it came out great. So we got that. And then uh, another one I tested with that as well. Oh, I actually have, oh wait, I, I forgot. I have a time-lapse. Let's watch that. So then we moved on um, a, another of my force five um, childhood memories is I love space Cateers. Grandizer and space Cateers were kind of my two favorites. Um, so this is me with a cat from space Cateers, and I printed it in the same flash forge PLA and you can see something with no supports just really came out quite nice. Okay, we got that. So then we got crazy. We decided to print. Um, so I've been debating on building a Voron and I have all the files and blah, blah, blah. And I like some of their tests. So just in regular PLA, I printed their Voron cube. And again, this is a good quality PLA. I believe this is uh, AMZ 3D. Um, they're actually based out of Canada as well. I use pretty much almost all Canadian PLA because it's easier for me to get. Um, so, or PLA that's easy to get in Canada, but I use a lot of uh, digitmakers.ca and filaments.ca PLA. I've got some of theirs too. Um, so this I think came out great. Then uh, same PLA. I was printing at the same time when I was doing all the test prints for this, I was printing uh, Toy Maker 3D's new arc that hangs on the wall and it's like a shelving unit, but it looks just like the Transformers arc in the mountain. So this is just one of the pieces from that. So I figured I would just give it a go. And that is beautiful. Look at that. It's beautiful. I, I have seen and I have owned a lot of other printers that cost way more that will not print like this out of the box. Just will not do it. So there's that. Then I had to go to my buddy Jeff from Hex 3D and he has this and I have never printed this guy before and I, I've been staring at it forever and like, I gotta print this. This is Thomas the TIE Fighter. And again, so he was supported at the bottom all through here 
And you can see it's a little bit rough, but again, I didn't really tune the supports at all. I just printed and went. But in general, other than the supports, it really does look great. So there we go. We've got that. Then I decided that I was going to print, and I think I have a time lapse of this one too. Um, I, I had bought a set uh, that I made, I printed for a, one of my best friends for Christmas a couple years ago. He's a big chess fan. So I printed him, if anybody's ever seen, I, th I think I bought it on my mini factory, but I could be wrong. And I forget who the modeler is, but it's, um, it's a roll up chess set that looks like a giant rook. And it's really, really cool. Um, somebody's running the water upstairs. Can you hear that? Um, so it looks really cool. The whole board uh, rolls up and folds out. So I just printed uh, the night piece from it just to see. And you can see that that came out beautiful as well. So then I thought, I'll check out the other nozzle. So I did. And I figured I would just use ABS. I know I could have used the other nozzle, the one that was in there, but I didn't. I wanted to try the other one, so I did. So I had some uh, Hatchbox ABS kicking around. And uh, this is actually another one of those like test models to see you know how your calibration is and blah, blah, blah. So it's basically just a screw and a nut kind of thing. And as you can see, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, it doesn't screw all the way in, but again, didn't really tune the printer. So totally okay with that, a little tuning and that will come out perfect. Um, and then this, I just whipped this up in uh, Fusion really quick, just because I wanted something that was gonna print, you know, from almost corner to corner. So I just did this. And as you can see, well, let me put it down here so you can see it on there. Let me move these guys. Everyone get out of my way. Can you see it? That is flat. There was no lifting. There was no curling. There was no anything. This stuck to the bed. That impressed me. I always have a problem with almost any machine other than my Creator Pro, obviously. And I did have to print a piece to because there was a draft like I showed you. That was why I checked on this. There was a little draft that comes in through the Creator Pro door through the handle where this one, they fixed that design. So that's what I did in ABS just because I don't print a ton of ABS and I don't particularly love the smell. So that was all I did. Then I decided to get a little bit bigger. Wexter's Thor. And I did this at pretty much the entire height of the printer. Now, again, let me, here, let's get all these guys over here. It's white, so it's a little tough to see. But other than the support markings down here, a little scarring, but they're not even bad. And a little bit of stringing. This came out great. Then, Wexter again, Godzilla. Can see here, it's beautiful. I have I made my point. How happy I am with this printer? It's crazy. Then going even further than that, um, I forget the name of the modeler of this one. Uh, a friend of mine was promoting this guy, so I bought the model. Uh, it's a stunning, stunning model. It's really designed for resin and it's designed much smaller than this. But I happened to see some, I had some like no name brand gold silk PLA kicking around. I, it, it's not that good to be honest. Um, but I printed this anyway. This is Loki's head. And this is probably at like 300 plus percent, but I wanted to go pretty high on the printer. Now you can see the quality of the PLA isn't that great. So it's, you know, it's a little rough, but in general, like it has a lot of like zits and whatever, but that's not the machine, that's the PLA. Um, but as you can see, it still did a really nice job. And then finally, 
This is another one from Hex 3D. Uh, this is the Stan Lee Memorial, and I really love this print. So I, I print it often to test printers because it's a nice print, and I love Stan Lee, and I'm a Marvel nerd, and it, it's, it's Stan. Anyway, gorgeous. Again, this is the NatureWorks plastic, so you can see the difference between that one and the Loki. You know, these are the same exact settings with different PLA, but this is gorgeous. And that's how I printed, but that's kind of a lot. So as you can see, I spent a little bit of extra time on this little guy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna clean up all this stuff and we'll give you some final thoughts. Okay, so wrapping this up, guys, this is an awesome printer. I, I, I honestly, I, I almost can't believe I'm saying it. This is an awesome printer. Um, this, you know, like I said, they're not positive, or at least at this time, we're not positive. It should be somewhere around 599 US. The nozzles, like I, I went through that, you know, they're between 27 and 45 bucks, depending. And they're, it's not just the nozzle, it is the entire hot end piece that just snaps in, snaps out. Super easy to do. Um, quick recap, 150 by 150 by 150. Max bed temperature is 100 C. Max uh, uh, minimum layer resolution is uh, 0 0.4. Maximum is 0 0.1. Um, what do we got super super quiet machine it's on right now and you can probably hear the fan a little bit and that's about it um, and that's the power supply fan a uh, little webcam built in wi-fi ethernet usb for uh, i could see these in like in armies in schools and libraries and places like that because they're so quiet they wouldn't distract anybody um, they're super easy to use. They're fully enclosed. I honestly, I mean, even when I was printing ABS, I didn't really smell it. So, I mean, that's true. Uh, you know, I smell it less than I would smell it printing on, uh, like a, a mega S or something like that. That's open. I smelled it a lot less because it's fully enclosed and it has a fan. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about this little guy. Uh, that's really all I got. So I hope that you enjoy this video. It's, it's, it's a little different for me normally doing something that's giant as opposed to something small. Um, but I really love this printer. I'm, I, I don't know. I, just, I can't say enough about it. So I'm keeping him. His name is Gears to go in with the, you know, he's one of the mini bots from the Transformers. Um, so this is Gears. He's going to be added to my collection. He's going to hang over with Bumblebee, who is my creator pro. And... Uh, we're gonna do all that good stuff so if you like this video please hit the thumbs up if you didn't go ahead and hit the thumbs down i'm not gonna cry over it um also if you you know want to ring the bell to get notified if i get any other printers from flashboards that would be great um you can also please subscribe to my channel because that's always good and uh if you want you can follow me on instagram or facebook or I don't tweet very often, but I have a Twitter account. Once in a while, I post something and uh, all that good stuff. And what else? I have a cat. Here he comes. Hey, buddy. That's Zildjian. He's old and crotchety like me. Um, I also have a link. I, I don't get paid to make these videos. I do them all in my free time. Um, hi. And, uh, you know, if you really like it, you can use the buy me a coffee link. Just buy me a coffee. I love coffee. I love coffee. Um, anyway, so I am going to go and start editing this video so I can post it so you guys can actually see it. Wow. Zildjian says, Dad, you must do it now. Hi. Yeah. What? Okay. You heard it. Zildjian said so. Dad, stop talking and go edit this video so you can post it. So that's what I'm going to do. Guys, this is Chris from Versus 3D. Thank you so much for sitting through this video. And I hopefully will be back soon with some more stuff. I know I do have a couple of cool things I want to show you soon. Be good.